I now call the Huntsville City Council meeting to order. If all that would like to and are able to, please rise for the invocation led by Reverend Todd Owen, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councilman Bill Kling. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this great city in which you have placed us to live, to work, and to serve you and one another together. We give you thanks for its natural beauty, its vast resources, and for its people, people that you love and gave your all for. Send now upon these our leaders a spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, so that they may faithfully serve in their offices and make decisions in this meeting with a steadfast purpose to promote the well-being of all people. Help us all to remember that you have given us all that we have. May all of us, by your grace, be faithful stewards of all you've given us, remembering that we will one day stand before you to account for what we've done with all that you've given us. As citizens together in this city, may we all do our part in making our hearts gracious, our minds sound, our wills righteous, and our actions just, to the honor and glory of your name. Amen. Please face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you, Reverend Owens. Thank you, Mr. Kling. The minutes from the regular council meeting held October 26 have been received and they'll stand approved if there's no objections. Mayor, you have the floor. Bless you. Thank you, Mr. President. If I could ask Kenny Anderson to come forward. Uh, this is the time for our Kathy Youth of the Month. And I think we have a a lot of people here with the Kathy group, if y'all would come forward too. Kenny? Thank you, Mayor. This evening we have the privilege of recognizing Rachel Ryder. She is the next nominee in this wonderful process that we call the Kathy Young Citizen of the Month. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about her, and there's so much to say, but some of the highlights are that she's an eighth grade student at Chapman. Uh, she is or has volunteered in the last year 118 hours for school events, including raising $11,000 for Chapman students to take a trip to Washington, D.C. She has been described as a helper with a giving heart. She works to bring her peers together. And the nominee said that she is constantly looking at anger and sadness in the world and strives to prove that every day we can inspire others to build each other up and support one another. She has many different accomplishments and many different awards, and for that, she's being recognized as the November 2017 Rocket City Broadcasting Kathy Young Citizen of the Month. Congratulations. <laughs> Rachel, tonight I'm surrounded by a lot of good people who have some great things for you. I'm gonna start with Dr. Harry Hobbs. Rachel. Uh it's just amazing what you do and how you care about others. You really epitomize what the Young Citizen of the Month was constructed to do. And on behalf of Florida Institute of Technology uh, here in Huntsville, uh, and as the founder of CAFE Young Citizen of the Month, I want to present you with a bag so you can continue to serve others and continue to uh, reach for higher learning. And what a good news story. We really need that in these days. And thank you for being who you are. Rachel, I'm Jimbo from Rocket City Broadcasting. I represent three radio stations, Rocket 95.1, Star 99.1, and The Beat 98.1. We're very proud of you and glad to be a part of this, too. Listen to this really quickly. Student Council Officer 2015 to present. National Junior Honor Society. President's Volunteer Service Award. Gold. Student of the Month. Chapman Citizen of the Year, Chapman Student Ambassador of the Year, Academic Leader 2015 to present, and Peer Helper Leader in eighth grade. This is incredible. We love Huntsville. Mayor Battle and this great council have done great decisions in this very room to keep Huntsville awesome, and it's young people like you that are going to continue the legacy. So congratulations and thank you. I'm Joe Gertis here on behalf of Huntsville Utilities, our uh, management and our boards. 
And uh, boy, I don't know what I can say that hasn't already been said, but just keep that light. We need that. The world needs that right now. You are this city and this country's future. So keep up the wonderful work. Here are some tokens of our appreciation and just uh, thank you for everything that you're doing. Rachel, I represent an organization, the Optimist Club International, uh, comprised of uh, 100,000 adults uh, all over the world whose main goal is the development of young people into leaders. Uh, looking at your accomplishments, uh, you would have been a great fit for one of our junior Optimist Clubs. But uh, we hope to catch you somewhere on the, on the <laughs> other side and, and uh, become a, a member of one of our junior Optimist Clubs. But on, the, on behalf of the Optimist Club of Huntsville, an organization who has been around for about 70 years doing just that, I'd like to present you with a little token of our appreciation and your recognition. And one of the other things we have in the spring, we have a youth achievement banquet. So you will receive an invitation from us to be a part of that as well. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, Rachel, you're going to come to me. <laughs> On behalf of the Human Relations Commission for the City of Huntsville, we are so proud of the work that you're doing, and we know you're going to continue doing the good work. So on behalf of that, I present you your certificate from the City and the Human Relations Commission. Congratulations, sweetheart. Thank you. Rachel, on behalf of Chief McMurray and all the officers and employees of the Huntsville Police Department, we would like to recognize you for your exemplary service to the community. It's young people like you that set the example and are the shining light for our city and in our future. Thank you for what you do and keep up the good work. And Rachel, finally, uh, Gosh, you've gotten a lot of loot here. Good <laughs> gosh, it makes uh, becoming the citizen of the month really neat. We have you a co coin from the city to say thank you for being a great citizen. Thank you for making Huntsville the shining star. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you, Mayor Battle. Uh, Council members and the public, the administration has asked us to consider by unanimous consent 14A, so we, we, will, uh, we may take that up by unanimous consent today. Uh, we have no business with outside legal representation. We do have public hearings to be held. Now is the time and place for a public hearing on a resolution authorizing the city clerk treasurer to access the cost for the cutting of grass and weeds on certain properties that were in noncompliance of the grass and weed ordinance. Ms. Jordan? Yes, thank you, Councilman Russell. Um, this resolution identifies 30 properties that were in violation of the city's grass and weed ordinances, ordinance. Um, 25 of the property owners were local and five were out of state. All 30 owners received written notification that they were in violation of the ordinance and were given 14 days to cut their grass. They all failed to do that and community development staff did cut them and we're asking for your approval to assess the cost. Thank you, Ms. Jordan. Does anyone from the public wish to address the council on this particular issue? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Thank you. Now is the time and place for a public hearing on ordinance number 17-742, rezoning 171.41 acres of property lying east and south of Liberty Hill Road and on the east side of Opportunity Boulevard from Residence 1 District and Industrial Park District to Planned Industrial District. Ms. Nichols. This rezoning request is city-owned property. This property is currently split between two different zoning designations. The northern portion of the property that you see in the brown is currently zoned Residence 1 District. It is currently agricultural land. Also, the property to the south is uh, excuse me is zoned plan excuse me industrial park district which is uh, not consistent with the other portions of the North Huntsville Industrial Park planning staff would like to propose that both parcels be rezoned to 
planned industrial district, which will be consistent um, with the remaining areas of the park and others that are currently being rezoned at this time. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Nichols. Does anyone from the public wish to address the council on this particular issue? Ms. Reed, please state your name and address for the record. Jackie Reed, Jack Coleman Drive. Welcome. What's a planned? What's a planned industrial district, and who plans it? <laughs> please tell the people if the city is that city-owned property. I thought that's what she said. Yes, ma'am, it's city-owned property. I did not know that before. If they had it at planning commission, I don't think that was heard. But tell me what, you're changing all of this, several district in here to a plan, and tell me who's interested in it and what are you going to do with it. Thank you. If somebody knows, and if you don't, look it up and tell me. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Ms. Nichols, could you um, give just a brief rundown of what can go in a planned industrial district? I believe that's what Ms. Reed's asking. Sure. Um, Ms. Reed, uh, the planned industrial district is just another one of our industrial parks. Um, the difference between industrial park and planned industrial one has a um, more uh, strenuous landscape buffer and other um, screening material uh, items that are listed within the ordinance versus another. All of the uses are pretty much the same. It can accommodate any type of uh, manufacturing um, use as well as you can also have office uses and a few other industrial components. Thank you. Mr. Davis, did you want to chime in? If I could, Council President. Uh, the request to rezone the industrial park zoning that the, on the screen to the bottom portion of the map Ms. Nichols has shown, that was acquired as part of our uh, efforts to recruit Toyota years ago. Uh, it was remnants that we uh, retained in that real estate purchase to uh, bring Toyota to Huntsville, Alabama. And then as that park grew, we acquired more land to the north and did more of a master plan under planned industry. We'd like to include that remnant track, if you would, uh, from the Toyota purchase to be planned industry. And then the part to the north that is currently zoned residential we acquired years ago that was already in the city of Huntsville uh, to be included in that master plan. We've just never rezoned it. So we're trying to get North Huntsville Industrial Park contiguous with a zoning effort uh, so we can better market uh, North Huntsville Industrial Park. Ms. Reed, do you want to say anything else? One more question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, are we selling this property? Are we keeping this property and developing it? Or I, I didn't really get the total answer that I was looking for. Is the city owned it? Or have you declared a surplus? Or have you done laid out the master plan? And do you know what you're going to do with it? Thank you. Ms. Reed, the city owns it and the city sells it to interested customers and they buy it at a certain rate, just like any other uh, property the city owns. Does anyone else wish to address the council? Move for approval. The public hearing is now closed. We have a motion by Mr. Kling, a second by the chair. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We have several public hearings to be set. We have a resolution to set a public hearing on an ordinance zoning 15.48 acres of newly annexed property lying on the south side of Harbin Road and west of Nance Road to Residence 2 District. This will be set December 21st, 2017 at the regular council meeting. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Kling, second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor of setting the hearing say aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We have a resolution to set a public hearing on an ordinance zoning 16.42 acres of newly annexed property lying east of Old Railroad Bed and south of Capshaw Road to Residence 2 District. This will be set for the December 21st, 2017 regular council meeting. The chair moves to set the hearing. Second. Second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We have a resolution to set up public hearing on an ordinance zoning 76 acres of newly annexed property lying east of Liberty Hill Road and east of Route Road to Plan Industrial District. This will be set for the December 21st, 2017 regular council meeting. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Keith. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. We have a resolution to set a public hearing on an ordinance rezoning 23.94 acres of property lying on the south side of Adventist, Bull Adventist Boulevard and on the west side of Wind Drive from Residence 1A District and Commercial Industrial Park District to Research Park District. This will be set for December 21st, 2017 at the regular council meeting. The chair moves to set the hearing. Second. Second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? 
It carries. We have a resolution to set a public hearing on an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance of the City of Huntsville, Article 50, Research Park District, by amending Section 50.1, Uses Permitted, Section 50.3, Required Yards, Subsection 50.3.1, Section 50.4, Density Regulations, Subsection 50.4.1, and 50.4.2, Section 50.5, Street Access and Frontage, Subsection 50.5.1, Section 56, Off-Street Parking and Loading Requirements, Subsection 56.1 and 56.2, Section 50.8, Height Requirements, and Section 50.9, Landscaping Requirements, Subsection 50.9.1, to update language concerning the existing research park. This will be set December 21st, 2017. Uh, a motion by Mr. Culver, second by Mr. Kling. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? It carries. Six is a resolution to set a public hearing on an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance of the City of Huntsville, Article 51, Research Park West District, by amending Section 51.3, Required Yards, Subsection 51.3.1, Section 51.4, Density Controls, Subsection 51.4, Three and Section 51.8 height requirements, subsection 51.8.1 to update language concerning front yard density and height regulations. This will be set for the December 21st, 2017 meeting. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Kling. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. When I call. Opposed? It carries. We're now at communications report. When I call your name, you have three minutes to address the council. Mr. Thomas Piff. Big? Okay. Big plan or big idea? In yesterday's Huntsville Times, in the op-ed section, we have a big, big article. Our local newspaper extended City Administrator John Hamilton and Citizen Thomas Piff the opportunity to submit our narratives as op-ed pieces. I encourage everyone to read them. They are available at newsstands and online. Consuming a quarter of a page, John declares openness and transparency at least twice. His promise to us is that when answers arrive, we will hear them. Okay then. The municipal garage is ringed with survey markers and spray paint, and the city hall is spray painted as well. What do these markings mean? Who paid for them and how much? How long ago were these surveys made? You know the answers. Now, how long are we going to wait for your answers to arrive? The next question sh you should already know the answer to is this. How many stories of New City Hall will it take to accommodate employees from as many as 20 different buildings across town? Are you including our City Hall needs 40 years from now? Please convince us that you are not painting Huntsville taxpayers into yet another corner. As for facts versus haphazard charges and speculation, it is a fact that once we trade away our land to private developers for the price of a few upscale homes, we, the citizens of Huntsville, lose it forever. It is a fact that countless developers can deliver the same Urban Design Associates vision and iconic buildings that Mayor Tommy Battle tells us only triad properties can. It is a fact that the UDA study completely overlooked the Madison County Courthouse, no doubt a testament to their top-notch, nationally renowned urban planning expertise. It is a fact that much of our increased Big Spring Park footprint serves to erase the embarrassment of Triad's egregious sidewalk encroachment in 2003 and to set the table to completely ring our legacy park with cash registers. It is a fact that no-bid triad is the same no-bid developer that never produced a meaningful ground floor restaurant in 14 years at the summit, now the PNC Bank. Their private offices sit in the place of their promise. Shame on us to allow a repeat. Facts, Mr. Hamilton. Facts, Mr. Battle. We have choices, though. We can develop Clinton Avenue to the north first, and triad's buildings will still be lovely when built nearby. This is an indecent proposal and should never have been allowed to blossom in the first place. And I have a new bulletin from 2014 I'd love to share with you. Huntsville Times, April 2014. No sale. Mayor Tommy Battle wants to keep historic downtown bank building in public hands. 
Mayor Tommy Bandle has rejected an offer to sell the historic downtown Planters and Merchants Bank building to a prominent Huntsville businessman. Mr. Bandle Piff, your, your time's up. Just a second, please. I'm almost finished. One second or one minute? Half a minute. Okay, council members, is that okay? Thank you for the compromise. Battle said in it, it was his initial instinct that the building should remain in public ownership. Conversations with Huntsville residents interested in historic preservation reinforced those feelings, he said. It's a part of our heritage. And the overall sentiment is that we need to keep it in public hands. I didn't feel that selling this was in the vein of what regents wanted when they passed it on to us. Thanks. Mr. Piff, I, please go back to the microphone. Were those, were those rhetorical questions, or did you? Okay, some of them I, I took as rhetorical. Uh, Mr. Hamilton, did you? I'll give them to him in writing. If you sure, need we'll be glad to answer them. Okay. Mr. Hamilton, do you we'll want to answer the, the ones you can? i answer them in the future. Okay. Yeah, so just uh, obviously there's a survey going on around uh, these parcels. You can see it going on right now. Uh, and a, a portion of that is tied to the study that uh, that we contracted with GMC to do to uh, do a needs assessment for the new city hall. Uh, one of the things, if you pull up, you know, the, the map in GIS and look at the parcel map, uh, you'll see that a lot of these properties around here have really odd lines. There's there's parcels not intended to be part of the park that jut out into the park and vice versa. Uh, and so there's a lot of work that needs to be done to clean up those property lines. Uh, it is obviously tied to the the decisions that we would bring to council in the future about what parcels to retain and how to use them or versus ones that you might sell or lease to, to another user. Um, as to uh, the city hall, right now, uh, based on uh, based on the square footage needs that uh, that we're seeing, and, and the study is not complete, but we have some we have some pretty good estimates. Uh, the new city hall would be either six or seven stories, depending on the, the size of the footprint uh, we choose to go with. Uh, so it actually uh, we anticipate it actually being shorter than this city hall. The this city hall, the tower portion, is an extremely small footprint, so it was. Uh, built tall and skinny, uh, which is a very inefficient way, and, and obviously modern design has, has informed a much more efficient way for us to build office buildings. Uh, there's actually nine different locations, nine different buildings uh, that uh, that city would, the city hall, the city government would be able to vacate and consolidate into that. Uh, and so that that square footage, I think, will probably be approximately 125,000, 130 somewhere in that range. That's a, that's right now. That's just an estimate. Uh, the the study that we're doing does contemplate future growth, uh, and as we go into the actual design, uh, which which council has not yet uh, been, has seen a contract for the actual architectural design, the study that's going on right now is really just a needs assessment that would inform the actual architectural design. Uh, but that design will include a number of strategies to accommodate future growth. Uh, and there's there's a, there's multiple ways of doing that. The other thing that you also hear citizens asking about is, uh, you know, right now we're we're looking at how it it fits on the the parcel across the street where the current garage is. Uh, that current garage has really reached its use, end of its usable life. We've done some things to extend that life a little bit, but the reality is it it really needs to be rebuilt, and it's not big enough. So in addition to a new city hall building, uh, we can build a new new uh, garage. It's about 50 percent greater capacity than what we have right now. Uh, and what that actually does, it, it grows the capacity for parking right here in this part of downtown even more substantially than just that 200 plus spaces, because it also, there's a lot of spaces in the BB&T building garage uh, that the city owns and is, in, and is used by city employees that would transition to that garage. So in addition to having greater capacity on that parcel across the street, you would free up current uh, current capacity inside existing garages in this area. So uh, there's a number of things that we're going to do to to significantly improve the parking situation in the blocks here on, on City Hall and around City Hall. So uh, a number of those kind of things uh, can be done. There was a, a few questions that, that he threw out that I don't know the answer off the top of my yeah. head. So if we could get those we'll questions, get those we'll in writing. address in more detail. Thank you. Mr. Tom Devinish. It's Mr. Devinish here. Mr. Charles Henry. Good evening, Mr. Henry. Uh, Welcome. Charles Henry, 5016 Lowry Circle, Huntsville, Alabama. I'd like to address the, to the mayor, please. I'd like to get some information as to how World War II vets can get accommodations for the uh, upcoming parade. I need 
I'm sorry. And would you repeat that? How they get what? A company yeah. home to see to obtain a, a place in, in a parade for World War II. That's yes, on July, uh, um, November 11th. The accommodations for the parade. Oh, uh, would you like to participate in the parade, or yes, you want a place to? Yes, for the last two years, I've had to get out and just hustle a ride. Last year, I was on an old World War II truck, had to sit in the back. Truck was covered. No one could see me. I couldn't see anyone. Uh -huh. I can, I can understand how Rosa Parks felt sitting at the back of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> if you will get me your name and number, uh, let me see what we can do, and we will get you with uh, with somebody who I think can get you in, and into a very question. prominent to place. Your, and as being a World War II vet, we'd be glad to have you there. To your knowledge, have you been contacted, or anyone in your office been contacted with Forever Young organization? I believe we have seen the Forever Young. Yes, sir. We did. Yeah. But uh, if, if I'll, I'll come out in just a second. I'll get your, uh, your information, your contact information. I may have you a great place to ride in that parade. And, okay, fine, thank you. Council Culver. Yes, sir. Am I on your do not call, do not return call list? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> you and I have had many meetings, and we still can at your discretion. So oh, every time I call you, I never get a return call. I figured I was, I'm on a do not call list. No, sir. No, sir. And and last, as long as you live in District meeting, 5, you're not on a do not call list. All right. <laughs> you made reference to uh, meetings, and you sent out notices to that, correct? How many? Now, I'm talking about two different meetings. I was talking about the private meetings that you and I have had, but I was, as it relates to notices, I send those out to my town hall meetings. Yes, right. That's, that's, that's what I'm referring to. How okay. many did yes, this page send out? Well, just this last uh, uh, mail out was 2,000 meetings. I mean, 2,000. 2,000 notice, notice notices. Meetings. Yeah. Well, I live in your district, Highland Village. No one in my village has received a notice. What, what, are you saying it's just specific areas in your district? And Mr. President, if I could address this, I know we yeah, should have Mr. Henry, uh, Yeah, Mr. Henry, yeah, I apologize. Your comments should be addressed to me as the chair or the council as a whole. If you want to have an individual uh, conversation with Mr. Culver, he'll be glad to meet you outside or y'all can right. set up an appointment right. if he has your contact information. I just want to say one more thing. I want to thank Councilman McLean for, for, for uh, making a statement that he that uh, Ms. Reed can speak anytime she re 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 and, and Mr. Henry, uh, Mr. Hamilton is right there. He, he would like to get your address to talk about the parade. Ms. Jackie Reed. Thank you. I'm sorry, Ms. Robinson's not here tonight. Does anybody sit in her seat? I'm always trying to sit up there in somebody's seat. I don't think that's ever going to happen. But anyway, thanks for allowing the public's input, no matter what. I guess I wanted to know the, pr the price and how you go about selling the property. I see there's something on the agenda tonight that you're going to establish the price of land for selling North Huntsville Industrial Park. Do you have it appraised? Or who do you just come up with a figure? Or how do you come up with these figures? We didn't come up with much downtown on some figures when I asked some people. So I'd like to know how y'all deal with a sale of your property sometime. You'd have to tell me tonight. But uh, I'd just like to know that. And we got speeders all over this city, speeders. They'll run over you. Get out of the way. There's no respect anywhere, anywhere in the city as far as that goes. And I don't know if the city is involved with trying to metro government with a county up there. And if you are, get over it. Nobody in this city, I'm not sure in the state, could handle Metro government. We don't need that. I know he had it uh, reappraised over there, but I told him, I don't know if it's you or a battle that's going to try to connect the two, but it ain't going to work because I swear I'll be here at every meeting. Don't put that light on me yet. Anyway, <laughs> I just don't want Metro government because we're spending over $100 million probably. 75 million anyway we never got the last price on it with met building a jail so anyway i i just think it's a big think a bad idea and yes we're all on city property we're still lobbying against this property how much did it cost us now to do another survey on this building i know we hired an architect we didn't put it out for bid we paid them forty five thousand dollars to go do something and i said how would you hire an architect if you didn't know where you're going to build up this building house 
you don't know where you're going to build it, why would you hire an architect? But y'all paid one, I think, 45000 And then I was asked about why the courthouse and this building's already been marked off. Have you hired somebody to do another study other than that $150,000 that we paid someone to come in here and tell us how to operate this city? Stop it, please. We got intelligent people in this city. I don't know who's a feeding or telling you all this stuff, but and I want to hear from Mayor Battle when it comes to this city tearing it down and giving it to Triad Properties. He's the mayor. I'm holding him accountable. If I run against him, I'm holding him accountable. He's the mayor. He needs to be speaking up every now and then. Maybe he can't right now, but I need to hear from the mayor sometimes. <clears throat> We gave the golf course away. Every city has a golf course. We don't have one. So, I mean, sometimes I'm, I'm, I've got to have some. Ms. Reed, your time's up. Would you like an extra minute? I'll just wait till at the end of the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Council members, we have no Huntsville utility items. We do have board appointments to be voted on. We have a resolution Excuse reappointing. Excuse me, President. Mr. Mr. Yes. I just wanted to get a reference from um, Huntsville Utilities. If I could ask a get question. a reference? All right, yeah, I have a question for him. Oh, okay, you have yes, a question? Sir. Please go ahead, Mr. K. Um, so, had my town hall, a um, number of questions have come to my Facebook, so forth and so on about Oakwood. I just wonder if you could give us an update on where you are uh, when it comes to the piping and sort of specifically, obviously, my district, but just an overhead and probably a timeline as well. Sure, uh, absolutely, Councilman. Joe Gertis, Huntsville Utilities. Um, Councilman Keith had asked me to just give a quick update about our cast iron main replacement for our natural gas system. Uh, you may recall back in August, we alerted you to some rate adjustments on our gas rates and our availability fees. And part of what that was going to fund was to finish once and for all our cast iron main replacement. Uh, we have just started. Um, we intended to start on Oakwood Avenue, but there was an opportunity that presented itself on Newman, which is over here in the Blossomwood neighborhood. That's a short run of pipe. We expect to begin the Oakwood portion, which is roughly 11,000 feet of cast iron main that we'll be replacing uh, beginning just after Thanksgiving. Uh, the entire project expected to take about uh, three years. We're talking about roughly 27 miles of cast iron main that will be replaced. And by doing it all at once like this, we cut the cost in half, uh, approximately $7 million from down from just close to just short of $14 million. Is that? Absolutely. Thank you so much. You said just after Thanksgiving, like the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Thank you so I, I much. doubt we'll probably start that on <laughs> Black Friday, no, uh, I but um, yeah, I would think, you know, first, first of December, uh, will be started on that. Uh, I do not have an es estimate on how long it will take. No problem. But it is 11,000 feet, which is just short of two miles worth of Maine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Does anyone else have yes, Mr. Huntsville too? Mr. Thank, Quang. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, before the meeting, uh, I met with Mr. Gertis. He had told me that they uh, are working on an implementation schedule for smart meters. And I think something that's that significant, I think it would be good just to get out to the <coughs> community so they know what's, what's going on and what the timetable is. Absolutely. So um, what <coughs> I was explaining to Mr. Kling was uh, on next council meeting agenda, you will see three items for the approval of the contract for the meter installation vendor. What we'll be asking you to do at that time is let us go ahead and award those bids so that we can fund the installation of the new meters for the entire project, which we anticipate re take roughly three and a half, four years, beginning in mid to late 2018, probably closer to late FY18. Um, those are significant numbers. I don't have them in front of me right now, but uh, that is the beginning of, or the, or the next step, if you will, to deployment uh, I did explain to Councilman Kling that there will be an opt-out measure. We don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet, but we're evaluating what some of the other utilities, particularly in the Valley, have done. Uh, we know that there is some interest uh, in the community about this technology, mostly pro, some <coughs> con. Um, but, uh, you know, this is a path that every utility across the country is on. And if they're not on it, they're going to be on it soon. Uh, around the Valley, we are the last of the big eight uh, local power companies to begin with smart meter deployment. 
So that's what will be, that's the next step that we'll be coming to you uh, on the 16th with. Thank, Thank you. It. Any other questions or comments for Huntsville Utilities? We're now at board appointments to be voted on. One is a resolution reappointing Jesse T. Horton to the City Tree Commission for a term to expire October 8, 2019. Move for approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Kling, second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We have a resolution reappointing Burt Webster to the City Tree Commission for a term to expire October 8, 2019. Move for approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Kling, second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Three is a resolu resolution reappointing J. Elbert Peters to the City Tree Commission for a term to expire October 8, 2019. Move for approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Kling, second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Four is a resolution appointing Nancy Colon to the Madison County 310 Board for a term to expire April 1, 2019. Move for approval. Motion by Mr. Kling, second by Mr. Keith. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Five is a resolution appointing Eric Way to the Huntsville Ice Skating Complex Board of Control for a term to expire November 20th, 2018. Move for approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Kling, second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? Yes, sir. I just wanted to Mr. take a quick Keith. second. Um, as many of you have seen through our emails, and I wanted to thank Councilman Kling uh, Mr. Eric Wade is somebody who lives in District 1. Um, he has been very prominent in his volunteering. He's been very prominent in really every aspect of District 1 and, you know, District 4. And I want to thank you, uh, Councilman Kling, for sort of taking the lead on this nomination uh, for identifying somebody in my district that would be involved and sort of help with the issues that are going on at the Ice Plex. Further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? It carries. Council members, are there board appointment nominations? We're now at 10, approval expenditures. Uh, we have a 10A is a resolution authorizing expenditures for payment. Mr. Keith? Yes, sir. Um, I would move for the approval of expenditures in the amount of $8,905,008.23. Second. Motion by Mr. Keith, second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Mr. Keith, do you have a finance committee report? No, sir, I don't. We're now at Mayor Battle. Mayor? Uh, Mr. Chairman, for the record, I'd like to announce the following appointments. The reappointment of Willie Love to the uh, Huntsville Police Citizens Advisory Council for a term to expire July 8, 2018. The reappointment of John Olszewski to the Huntsville Police Citizens Advisory Council for a term to expire July 8, 2018. Uh, the appointment of David Edwards to seat four on the Huntsville Iceplex Board of Control for a term to expire November 20th, 2019. Um, we had some questions asked by the public and our public to be heard. Uh, one was about why we overlooked Madison County Courthouse in our planning process. If uh, most of you know, Madison County Courthouse is owned by another governmental entity. We would, not, um, we would not want to overstep our bounds with another, another uh, governmental entity, and that's why we, we do not get in the middle of, uh, of the courthouse. Uh, it's owned by the county commission, the Madison County Commission. Uh, Mrs. Reed asked about Metro government. Um, I have not heard that. It's been a long while since I've heard about Metro government, but um, if you have any more information, let us know. Uh, you know, so there's about a hundred different forms of, of metro government. Uh, you know, some good, some bad, some some in the middle. Uh, but we haven't heard anything on that uh, moving forward. And then you had a, had a question about uh, why did we pay an architect? Why were we pay an architect forty five thousand dollars? And then there was one hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> no, there's several contracts going on right now. Uh, number one, you. You've got the contract on uh, how to cut off the annex and how to properly do it and how to do the construction to cut off the annex. That's one of the contracts that's ongoing. We have a second contract that is uh, uh, right-sizing the departments here at the city. When we look at a new building, we need to know how big a, how, uh, big a space we need. And that, uh, that size of the building 
is the sum total of all the departments added together and, and making sure that they are right sized as we do it. So there are several um, there are several contracts going on and I'm not sure which ones you're referring to, but um, those are the two or three that I know that are out there. Um, also, uh, this Saturday, uh, for all you citizens who enjoyed planting trees, we would do another our fourth year of tree planting at John Hunt Park. If you look at some of the trees that we planted four years ago, they're really starting to get some size. And uh, Joy, thank you so much for the work that landscaping has done. Uh, we will start doing tree planting from 9 to 12. And also tomorrow uh, will be National Tree Planting Giveaway, and we will be giving away dogwoods this year. Is that right? You can come down and get your free dogwood and please plant it in the city of Huntsville and let it grow and uh, let it be shade for future generations. And uh, you can also, while you're coming down, if you get tired from planting your your dogwood trees, you can get a free hot dog. So uh, come down and get your <laughs> uh, get your trees. Uh, we have a housing expo on Saturday uh, at the Stone Event Center from two, 10 to 2, and you get <clears> free information on housing counseling, credit counseling, how to keep up a house. There's a lot of people who are first-time homeowners who need uh, to know how to how to keep a house up. And, um, and next week is uh, Veterans Day uh, on the 10th and 11th. And I think uh, we were just talking to Mr. Henry about that. And Mr. Henry, I can promise you this, if need be, I'll move out of my seat in the parade and I'll put you in my, seat, my place at the parade uh, for a World War II vet. I would love to have you there. Uh, but uh, secondly, uh, we've got a program going on right now, Show Your Red, White, and Blue. Um, and it's just a, it's something so that each of us uh, shows our pride in the flag, our pride in our country, uh, as we honor our veterans for their service and all that they have done to serve us. We're showing red, white, and blue. I have my flag on today, and uh, we're encouraging people to put flags out in front of their houses. Uh, we will have flags around Big Spring Park, and I think it's something that um, – um, fits is very fitting for our community. Uh, most most communities have a Veterans Day or have an Armed Forces Day. We <coughs> usually have a Veterans Week or an Armed Forces Week or a Memorial. Uh, when we have others have Memorial Days, we have Memorial Weeks. But it's just to show uh, how much we appreciate those who serve, those who have served, and those who are in our community. And um, if you would, uh, everybody needs to keep on the prayer list uh, the uh, 115th Signal Battalion, who is from. Uh, our, uh, Alabama National Guard, uh, who deployed from here um, out three months ago, is in Kuwait, uh, is serving in theater there. So they're not just in Kuwait, they're all throughout that theater and they're uh, providing communication posts uh, throughout that theater. And um, it's, it's a group of people from here, uh, over t 200 members who are from here. So uh, to each of you, keep them on your prayer list. And that's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councilmembers, we're going to shake it up a little bit. Mr. Kling, will you go first tonight, please? Thank you. I guess we're doing beauty before age tonight, Mr. That's President. correct. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'd like to ask, is Randy Cunningham here tonight by chance? Okay, I guess he is coming. Hi, Randy. Uh, you may recall that the uh, last week I'd sent you some follow-up information about problems that we were having uh, three distinct neighborhoods with the same um, uh, builder and seems to be having a problem getting things to settle down. Have you been able to reach out or to find a way that we can get that resolved where that type of problem doesn't happen in the future? Uh, I've actually had a conversation with Mr. Riley this week and we're working on, on some method to reach out to him and, and express our, our uh, concerns. Okay, so so it is being worked on. I know y'all just had a, had a week since the last, last time. Thank you, sir, appreciate that. A uh, couple things, I guess, during the uh, last week, it was my privilege to <clears throat> attend the Randolph School homecoming, and uh, that school is now has two campuses, and it's coming up on very close to uh, 50 years of no, excuse me, 60 years of being in the community, and that's, uh, that's quite a milestone. They're sitting at 58 right now, and, um, you know, it's hard to believe that they've been around that long. But uh, it was a good football game. Unfortunately, it didn't go quite the way we had hoped, but uh, uh, good to get out and, and to see the folks. Um, best part of this year, this time of the year, I think, is high school football. Uh, earlier this week, uh, we attended the uh, 50th uh, 
Airport Authority Regional Partnership uh, Celebration Dinner, and uh, it's hard to believe that that airport's been out there for 50 years, but that's a beautiful resource. Uh, a lot of great future, and um, I think we're going to see great things happen uh, for the next 50 years. And that's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kling. Mr. Culver. Yes. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just a couple of quick things. Um, one is we're having our final town hall meeting. Um, I think that is Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday at Williams uh, Middle School, uh, where we will discuss the Zert Road projects. So if you live in proximity to that area, uh, we'll desert, discuss the Zert and Martin Road projects. Uh, make sure you come out. We'll entertain whatever questions that you may have. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Uh, Henry. Henry, yes, sir. Uh, my good friend, Mr. Henry. Sir, because District 5 is such a large and diverse district, when we do town hall meetings like the one that I'm doing uh, on Tuesday, it will be kind of for the residents that live in that particular area, although anybody, Ms. Reed, can attend. Any time that I do a town hall meeting, it is open to the public but the needs that those individuals have in that community may differ from the needs that residents who live on Maston Lake and Grizzard Road may have. So what I do, I take town hall meetings all over the district. This is probably the eighth or ninth town hall meeting uh, that we've had this year. And uh, we'll continue with those uh, probably beginning in the new coming year. Uh, also, just a quick note, and I promise to be brief. Uh, so in, lieu, in view of what's happening in New York as it relates to that unfortunate situation with the terrorist attack on the cyclist, uh, I've spoken to the media. I've always had a concern about the bike lanes that run parallel with the roads, and the one that we looked at more specifically was on uh, Old Monrovia, where you know traffic is going 40, 50 miles an hour, uh, 40 miles per hour is I think 35, 40 is the speed limit. Sometimes people go faster, Chief. Um, and I've jogged down that area too, so I, it, it's just not exactly the safest place to be. So I know this is something that is going to require a lot of research, perhaps. But if we could maybe look at maybe some things that are being done in other cities. I know that New York has an entire lane that's wide enough for a vehicle as their bike lane. Mayor, you remember that when we were in New York together. Um, so our lanes are not as wide, but yeah, we were in New York, Mayor. <laughs> so our lanes are not as wide, but with regards to that, if there were to be something we can do to kind of Make it a little safer, and that's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Culver. Mr. Keith. Uh, bear with me. Thank you, Mr. President, for letting me go last. Um, one I want to say first, thank you to Steve and his team, uh, Department of Rex. Um, the Buffalo Rock team rocked. They were everything to us. We had a wonderful build-out. Um, everything went according to plan, and I can't tell you how many people have reached out to me who have been thankful, seeing kids play on it just has uh, an experience to it, and it was a blessing to not only see – um, individuals from the community, but also individuals in City Hall. Uh, Colonel Hamilton was there, and just just a wonderful experience. Greengate School reached out, Boys and Girls Club reached out, Village of Promise reached out. We really just changed in uh, a community with a simple park. And I know it sounds simple, but to Steve and his whole team, um, you guys really, really made an impact with that, and I'm very thankful for that, as well as my Black wristband, Steve. Um, it has been a I just it was a wonderful, wonderful experience for me. Uh, secondly, I want to say thank you. I had a budget, I had a bunch of meetings, but I had a budget meeting. I want to say thank you to, to Ms. Sargent for taking the time out, and she's done a number of times, for just really giving me impactful information, uh, for taking the time to teach me. Um, I love to learn, and she loves to teach. So I am very thankful for that, as, as well as with Kerbal Hamilton. I want to thank uh, Melvin and Mike Bush. We had a very... Uh, productive meeting um, that was led and spearheaded by Miss Jordan, who has been um, really carrying this whole Council High project. And we are very confident in the product that we 
showed the Council High Association. And though it was a heartfelt, as we can imagine, meeting, I was extremely proud of what our planning department did and everybody who was involved. And we have received a number of emails of support and we're excited that hopefully we officially get a letter of support back and we can move forward with that project. But thank you, Ms. Jordan, for everything you did. I want to make a quick announcement as well. North Huntsville will be having a very important meeting. Uh, November 6th, I'll be having a meeting, but I think one of the more important meetings is for my school board rep. Miss um, Watkins will be hosting a meeting at the Richard Shower Center that will give uh, very, very important information around the ad valorem tax. Uh, there's so much misinformation out there. People really don't understand. I know tax is a plague word, but she needs um, as many people there that can share the importance of that tax to our community. And it's at 6 p.m. at the Richard Shower Center. Um, that's, that's Monday. Um, also, I want to thank everybody, especially Mrs. Lowe, who was involved with um, Ralph's funeral. Um, I want to thank Huntsville Utilities, who sent the, you know, the flowers. I saw a large amount of people who just stopped by uh, from Huntsville Utilities, City Hall, the, hosp the, the hospital board, just people who were impacted by Ralph. He had a really full funeral. And it was just an amazing, an amazing experience. He had a number of uh, veterans who rode up uh, on their bikes and supported him as well. It was, it was a great funeral. Um, also to everybody, it was a very good funeral for Mr. Harrison. Um, very packed house and impactful experience as well. Um, I also wanna say thank you to Mr. Dan and everybody at traffic as well as Mr. Tommy and Colonel as we get ready to make this unveil. I don't know if it'll be hopefully later in the week of next week that we will show and recognize the spot that is safe for veterans and that that memorial, um, that significant spot there in front of City Hall, read Mr. Timberlake. Uh, I will find the date of what that is and the time as well, but I'm excited to make that commitment to the family and have that respect for our, our veterans. Um, I had one more thing. Oh, so I had a really good breakfast with our mayor. Um, every once in a while, you can corral him around and just have a real conversation. I don't know why he loves to always go to Blue Plate. <laughs> I don't know if he's had burritos at Sin Shays, but they're pretty good. Um, but we ate at Blue Plate and had a, a very in-depthful conversation. Um, crime is just a hot topic right now in North Huntsville. And again, there's pragmatism and patience that's needed for all great officials. and. As you can imagine, I've received so many calls, concerns, emails, texts around crime. So on November 6th, uh, with the support of the chief, as well as our standing captain, um, Rice, we'll be leading the charge on giving the right information around crime. We're trying to do some very innovative things of which take time to roll out. CCTV is one of those things. And we want to give people an understanding of why we're doing it. You know, one brick doesn't build a wall, but we want to add a you know, a tool shed, a, a tool to the tool shed of the police department who've been doing a wonderful job. But we wanna do it in the right way. We wanna let citizens know what to expect. Just because you put TVs up doesn't mean crime's going down. But we really wanna increase the resource um, for the police department. But also we wanna evolve with the crime um, and have an opportunity to sort of change the social connotations of some of the neighborhoods. So November 6th, it'll be a town hall. I'll be as much of a resident as I've ever been to sort of hear true factual information from our captain, from that precinct, and from our chief to sit back and listen, and also just to get some of the input from the people who, you know, if somebody has a crime happen to them, they don't care what the crime rate is. They wanna know how do they feel more safe in the place that they call home. And we owe it to every citizen here, no matter if they live in North Woods or Hampton Cove, to try and give them the safest neighborhood we can as possible. So we're gonna approach that from a, a pragmatic sense on Monday. And finally, um, if I can get Shane to come up. Over the weekend, I got a call uh, not too long ago. For many of you, you remember Ms. D came here discussing some of the issues um, about university, um, the corridor specifically between Terry Heights and Northwoods. And Shane, I guess I'm gonna just blurb them out and I know you're probably going to address them but you know for me who's crossed that many a times what is the biggest issue in y'all is this human behavior or is this a design flaw and then yeah, I'm going to say them all because I know you'll probably hit them all why not a bridge as you move further down 
um, university before you get to UAH, there's a bridge there. What does that bridge cost? What would it cost if we were to do a bridge? Um, also, in the past, if there's been um, other examples of opportunity to affect the walking pattern of individuals, what has been proposed and why was it not used? And um, do you believe that there are other proposals we have not looked at? Um, and I do want to say I, I want to update you. So I did get in contact with Delvin and we'll be ne meeting next Wednesday. So I, I do plan to share this with him. He's on board for whatever he thinks or you think or they think together what we think, I guess, would be best. And thank you again for this proposal. No, uh, Councilman Keefe, uh, I'd like to address your questions, uh, if I may. Uh, this is not a new issue to the community. Uh, you know, we cannot put a price on someone's life. Uh, we, you know, it, it, it's an issue that has been around. Uh, we've made improvements on University Drive with the, the cooperation of ALDOT, uh, Alabama Department of Transportation. Um, we hate to see anyone either injured or, you know, ultimately lose their life, especially a pedestrian or a bicyclist. I mean, we can't put a price on that. Uh, what we have on the screen is the crosswalk improvements that have been made over the years. Um, at one point, uh, the Pulaski Pike intersection, which would be crosswalk number five, and then crosswalk number one uh, on the far western end were the only two that existed. Uh, over the years, we've added a second crosswalk on the west and then crosswalks three and four uh, that if you kind of look at the north or the midpoint of the community, uh, crosswalks three and four are about 600 feet away from the center of the neighborhood. And then about 800 feet to the west are crosswalks one and two. Uh, you also have a crosswalk to the retail <coughs> portions uh, at crosswalk number six that's shown on the map that gets you into the Costco Home Depot retail type development there. So there's safe access, uh, multiple points of safe access on University Drive. Uh, I don't think that's the answer that we want. I mean, naturally, when there's still accidents occurring, uh, improvements can be made. Uh, in working with ALDOT, there's an access management uh, project that's ongoing on University Drive from essentially Research Park Boulevard to Memorial Parkway. That project should uh, start sometime in 2018. Uh, we think probably the first or second quarter of 2018. It will include uh, a seventh crosswalk for this area, shown in red there, that's uh, directly in the midpoint of the community there on, at Yukon. You know, it'll be a push button, stop all traffic. And even with that addition, uh, I can't guarantee 100% safety. You know, humans' patterns uh, of how we act sometimes uh, you know, we're a fast-paced society. We want instantaneous gratitude. And I think some of that's with our electronic devices we have today. So, you know, just to take a minute, minute and a half to walk east or west to cross safely, sometimes uh, not just this location, but other parts of the community, you know, we have a tendency to say, hey, I'm here, it looks clear, I'm gonna walk. But, uh, you know, that's a seven lane highway. And, you know, from edge of sidewalk to edge of sidewalk is probably 120 feet. On, on average distance that you're trying to cross active traffic mid-block. Uh, so that I, I believe the additional crosswalk uh, would encourage someone to walk less either east or west to a crosswalk to cross safely. Uh, it definitely will be an improvement. Um, I know a bridge has been brought up uh, before. Uh, we worked with ALDOT several years ago at University Place School uh, just west of here to put a uh, a bridge is, is currently there today. Uh, what we found out in that effort, uh, to, in today's no dollars, it would probably be about a two and a half million dollar project. Uh, we jointly built that many years ago. I was part of the city when we did that. The problem was we spent a little over a million dollars and what we realized we had put uh, school uh, resource officers back out there and forced children to actually use it because, you know, Sky bridges, if you will, pedestrian bridges only work. Uh, you'll find that if if they're not a grade separation where the sidewalk, you, you just currently on your path go across the bridge. You don't have to climb three flights of stairs and then climb back down. They're used pretty well. But if it requires you to stop, climb, you know, 20 feet in the air, cross, and 20 feet down, you only get about 10%, the last time we looked, about 10% usership. So one in 10 pedestrians will actually use it. They're still going to cross the at grade. So spending those kind of funds on, on, a, on a project like that kind of just makes you feel like you did something, but the problem still exists because you've created a solution that human nature doesn't want to use. 
so I don't think that would be the case here. Um, <clears throat> you know, in the past, one of the things that, that we worked on was um, a four-foot decorative rail fence with heavy landscaping. One, it would uh, add a nice look to the community, but also it would force pedestrians to go down to the crosswalks to actually get across University Drive. Uh, we didn't get full support of that uh, for a number of reasons, uh, but you know, be an economical solution. I think for one, it would add some beautification to the area, and provide some ultimate safety that, uh, unless you know, naturally someone could could jump over a four-foot fence, it's waist high, kind of a handrail look. Uh, but to, for the normal pedestrian, it forces you to get to a safe crosswalk before you try to cross University Drive. Uh, something that could be re-looked at. At the time, it was going to be a joint effort with the Huntsville Housing Authority in the city, and uh, I think Councilman Culver really helped try to lead that charge, and we just could not get full support uh, for various reasons. So let's say that we, in, and I absolutely agree, because, uh, I mean, you can't really account for the missed accidents, right? I mean, I've been on that road and heard the honks or the swerves, the, you know, so we can only know, like, this Saturday that we lost somebody else because of this. Do you think that if the joint effort happens, because I, I don't want it to just be us, if the joint app happens, what do you think is a foreseeable build out time frame? What, how fast do you think that we make a joint effort with the housing authority? Obviously a meeting is set right away, the logistics. What is the foreseeable time frame? do you think? Well, certainly it would, you know, it would be a proposal to be brought before this council and the council would have to support that expenditure, you know, a cost effort between Huntsville Housing Authority. But, the effort of actual construction is something that could be accomplished in 30 to 60 days. I mean, it's not a huge ongoing effort, you know, to put up a, a four foot standard fence that you'd see around a swimming pool or, or some decorative fence that you see around a lot of homes in Huntsville. Uh, be the same fence that we put along Pulaski Pike going to the new school uh, along the sidewalk. It'd be that same type fence with some low bearing shrubs in front of it to, to really dress it up. Uh, that's something going very quickly, but you know, it'd have to be something brought before this council for approval. And I do want to say to the council members, the community is asking for this or something. Um, you know, this is coming out of the community conversation. It's coming from Ms. D, who is really the voice of that community. And it seems that there's only one last step, uh, which would be the Huntsville housing. Um, do you have an estimated, if you had to guess, cost, would we maintain it? Would that, you know, would that be on us? Will we help them, or we just give them the money to build it out? Uh, I think it would be a joint venture, something that you know we would have to call share. We've done that with other agencies before. Okay. Uh, it would not be in public right away, so it would probably be you know on uh, HHA property in an easement, some type of PUD type easement. Uh, as far as the cost, that's something that uh, engineering department would come up with very quickly and provide you if you desire to have that. Okay. <coughs> Thank you so much, Shane. No, go ahead. Okay, so, uh, and Mr. Keith, that particular area uh, before 2012 was in District 5, and Mr. Davis worked with us. Uh, Mr. Lunday, then Huntsville Housing Authority Director. We probably spent a lot of money in terms of improving that area. Uh, now with a push button traffic light, we increased the time on the crossing so that people could get across the roadway. <coughs> the, the only thing that we kind of concluded that would work was what Mr. Davis just described, the decorative uh, wrought iron fence. And anything that, you know, I did as you do as a councilman, you take it to the people and, and get their approval. And uh, we seemingly had their approval. And at the time, it got to a point where we were ready to move forward. It took us about a year and a half because LDOT yeah. held up, you know, it's, it's a lot of, uh, uh, it takes time to get LDOT on board when you're trying to stop a major roadway. And University is a state roadway. But we got their blessings on it, and we were prepared to move forward. <coughs> and, uh, you know, as their then council representative, I listened to the people and they didn't want it. And Miss D was spearheading that. She was the one who was spearheading against that. And it was a council meeting that, uh, I mean, it was a town hall meeting that that uh, didn't didn't go too well. Yeah. <laughs> so so well, we are concerned about every life. I'm thinking about the kids. I'm thinking about 
the elderly. I'm thinking about anybody who, who crosses that area. But people have a tendency to go the most direct way from point A to point B. And so without forcing them to right. actually go to the crosswalks, it, it doesn't matter, Mr. Davis, how many we put in there. Probably. Correct. It, it, right. It's not an issue. There's not a safe path to cross university. It's yes. How do you get them there? How do you, how do you retrain human nature to go to that point to cross? And I'm agreeing. And I guess the biggest thing is, and I'll specifically go to Ms. D and talk about the, you know, the fence and the, you know, the brush. She obviously, you know, I brought up the light. Everybody thinks you can just put a light up. And like he said, there's a long process in order to get anything changed on a highway. My biggest thing was one assessing that there is a chance that we can affect it and saying this is what we'll do to do that. Now, again, human behavior, somebody might jump the fence and still get hit. Sure. Yeah. But if we have the opportunity in an economical sense to have a joint venture with Huntsville Housing and us to do what we can is where I want. And that is the sort of the process I'm going with Delvin to work my way down um, with two of the board members that would you be interested in this? And then, you know, the community within itself I imagine if, if that goes correctly and it has the blessing of both the community and Huntsville Housing, this is something that we could have as a joint venture. That does not mean that somebody won't get hit by another car, but that does mean that we have taken the steps that we feel we can take uh, to, you know, like you said, change human behavior as best we can. City staff's prepared to support you any way we can. Thank you so much, sir. Hey, Mr. Keith, are you finished? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, we're now at 13 unfinished business items for action. 13A is ordinance number 17-846, amending chapter 3, article 2, subsection uh, D of section 327 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Huntsville, Alabama, to update hours of operation within the Quigley District and Entertainment District 2. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Ms. Kling. Discussion? Uh, Mr. President, can we get uh, Mr. McGuffey, I see him over there, just to give a general explanation for Absolutely. Mr. McGuffey, would you give a general explanation, please? Yeah. Yes, sir. Council members, this is an ordinance to modify the entertainment district hours for downtown. Uh, this is primarily going to focus on Thursday to change it to 12 to 11. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are already at 12 to 11, so this will unify uh, the hours for the week. Further discussion? And uh, again, this is the, the downtown. Can you very generally describe the boundaries without stumping yourself? The general boundaries of downtown would be the No, I meant the, the Quigley <laughs> District, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I realize it's got a lot of zigzags, but I just didn't know if you could just generally. Mr. Kling's new to the area. He doesn't remember <laughs> much of the Huntsville. So. No, I just think it'd be good for the public to understand the areas. Sure, I, we can have it pulled up on the screen for you, Mr. Kling. We just say basically it's on both sides of the courthouse square. Is that a good way to it describe is. it? It is. It's around the square uh, from Constellation to north to the furniture factory area, south all the way down to Publix, uh, and lands in between. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. B is ordinance number 17-847, amending chapter 3, article 2, subsection C of section 328 of the Court of Ordinances of the City of Huntsville, Alabama, amending the Providence District. Chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Culver. Mr. McGuffey, could you explain this, please? Yes, sir. Council members, this is also an ordinance. This is uh, adding some land in Providence for a new structure uh, to be included uh, in the entertainment district. This is a new building under construction and the user there would like to be able to use the entertainment district in providence thank you further discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye opposed it carries c is ordinance number 17-848 establishing the price of land for sale in north huntsville industrial park chair moves for approval second second by mr kling miss nichols <laughs> miss jordan thank you um Council, our request is to lower the per acre cost of land in the North Huntsville Industrial Park from $50,000 to $35,000 and maintain the two acre track minimum. Um, a review of all 11 research and industrial parks currently being marketed by the Huntsville Madison Chamber of Commerce was conducted and it was determined that an adjustment of the per acre cost in the North Huntsville Industrial Park would bring it in line with other comparable parks, specifically um, the Chase Industrial Park and other private parks. 
and could potentially increase interest in the park. So it's before you tonight for your consideration. Thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We have uh, 14A, which is a new business item for introduction. The administration has asked that we consider this tonight. It is an ordinance annexing 2.91 acres of land lying on the north side of Indian Ridge Drive and east of Ditto Landing Parkway. The chair moves for unanimous consent to consider this item tonight. Second. There's a second by Mr. Kling. Mr. Keith, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Kling, how do you aye. vote? Mr. Culver? Aye. The chair votes aye. We have unanimous consent to consider it tonight. The chair moves for approval. Second. There's a second by Mr. Kling. You going to speak tonight, right now? I'm, okay, I'm go ready. ahead. <laughs> this particular annexation requests the property immediately west of this property um, outline the approximate 2.91 acres. Uh, the property on the east side was annexed back in April 2017 for the proposed Morningside Estate subdivision. The uh, developer has some drainage needs that must be met and with this 2.91 acres, they will be able to accomplish those uh, drainage concerns. And this uh, particular annexation will um, allow the developer to continue with the subdivision process, which is currently on hold until this annexation is complete. And, and so I guess you basically explain why we have to do this tonight, but you know, obviously the council doesn't like uh, rushing into these things and would like the normal process to be followed. If there's anything you can do to, to follow the normal process in the future, we'd appreciate it. I concur. Thank you. <laughs> Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We're now at 15 new business items for consideration or action. If you please notify the chair of any items you'd like to hold for further discussion. Any? Hearing none? I move for consolidation. Uh, well, Mr. Keith, I need to read them first, but you're well, I don't want to steal your thunder. You're welcome to do it. And I'd certainly go ahead with it, but Miss Reed would be upset with me. 15A is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute modification number one to the agreement between the City of Huntsville and Community Action Partnership of Huntsville, Madison, and Limestone Counties, Inc. for Emergency Solutions Grant, ESG funds. B is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter agreement between the City of Huntsville and Porter Roofing Contractors, Inc. for construction services for the Martin Luther King roof replacement located at 2000 Vernon Drive. C is a resolution authorizing acceptance of donations. D is a resolution authorizing travel expenses. E is an ordinance amending budget ordinance number 17-700 by changing the authorized personnel strength in various departments and funds. F is an ordinance amending budget ordinance number 17-700 by changing appropriating funding for various departments and funds. G is a resolution authorizing the mayor to an agreement with the low bidders meeting specifications outlined in the attached summary of bids for acceptance. H is a resolution authorizing the clerk treasurer to vote Southern States Bank letter credit number 5000041174 for Little Mountain 2 subdivision. I is a resolution authorizing the clerk treasurer to vote Bryant Bank letter credit number 1259 for Eastgate subdivision. J is a resolution authorizing the clerk treasurer to vote Bank Corp South Bank letter credit number 36200051942 for Magnolia Village at Lake Forest subdivision. K is a resolution authorizing the mayor into agreement between the City of Huntsville and Geo Solutions LLC for North Huntsville Industrial Park Geotechnical Investigation and Construction Services, project number 7116 SP20. L is a request for authorization to advertise and fill the position of water pollution control electrician to grade 14 at higher than minimum if necessary. M is a request for authorization to advertise and fill the position of information system security officer grade 18 at higher than minimum if necessary. N is a request for authorization to advertise and fill the position of programmer and analyst to grade 16 at higher than minimum if necessary. Mr. Keith, you want to give it a shot? <laughs> I move for consolidations of 15A through 15N. Second. Um, we have a motion to consolidate approved by Mr. Keith, a second by Mr. Kling. All those in favor of consolidation approval signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We have no legal department items or transactions. We're now at non-roster communications from the public. If you'd like to address the council, please go to the microphone now and you'll have three minutes to address the council. Ms. Reed. Thank you. I'm back. Anyway, Welcome. I'd like to make a statement about Channel 42. I don't know if y'all need to get a talk radio and do your socializing or whatever, but I really would like to see some of the meetings on Channel 42, Department of Transportation, Downtown Inc., 
and when you have your meetings. And I really think that you need to start having some work sessions with your own council <coughs> people, and let's all know what's going on in these neighborhoods. I always call the city council girls to see if they know when your town meetings are. A lot of people don't read the paper anymore, and a lot of the older people are not on the computers, so they don't know a lot's going on downtown, and I guess you all are very happy over all that, so that's a good thing. And the papers, I don't know, but anyway, I was told that that 40, probably 45,000, thank you, Mr. Hamilton, was part of that survey that was going on that I was questioning. Okay, that's a good thing. Then anyway, I would like to, I heard you say that this building's coming down over here pretty quick. Is that true? When is this annex building fixing to be torn down? Ms. Reed, are you finished? No, okay. I'm not through. Continue on then. Well, you can give me some answers when I get through it. I did want to say I'm saddened that my partner, Ralph Timberlake, and Bob Harrison's gone, but I'm recruiting out here to get me some more people, So, and I'm not gone yet, so don't throw it in, so I'll be here probably as long as some of you are. But anyway, I want to thank you for allowing the public to speak. Whose job is it that's supposed to put these meetings on that computer, Channel 42? I don't, I don't care whose it is, but they're not doing their job. And why do you hold town hall meetings over at Campus 805? Excuse me, are there a partnership there somewhere? Is that a tax write-off, and are we paying rent on that property up there? I have a lot of questions that I, I can't get answered sometimes. But God wakes me up in the middle of the night and hands me a lot of these questions. <clears throat> he keeps me busy day and night. But I love y'all, and, and I will be back. Don't tear down this building. And if you're going to tear it down, tell the people of this city to take some pictures now. If you know you're going to tear it down and you know the date, tell them to take their last pictures of the most important property of this city. I'm saying put it back and don't tear it down. I'm still lobbying you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Reed. Would anyone else like to address the council? Uh, Mr. President. Mr. Klein. Uh, I think one thing about Ms. Reed, I guess I'd like to respond to about town meetings. Uh, for the last 20 years plus, my town meetings, uh, third Monday of the month, easy formula. And Ms. Reed, as you know, I have town meeting notices that are on, on the city website and also uh, in the Senior Center uh, magazine. So I'm trying to do everything I can. If you want to get, if you want to mention it every time and you're speaking out news column, third Monday of the month, six o'clock. Okay, I'm just saying, cast your bread on as many uh, pieces of water as you can, but you're welcome to mention that if you want. Thank you, Mr. Klein. Does anyone else wish to address the council? Mr. Devonish, if you agree to name and address for the record, please. Tom Devonish, 2807 Castle Pine Circle. Welcome. I'm here to again address the Fountain Circle redevelopment project. I'm asking for the umpteenth time the Huntsville City Council to cancel the LOI with Triad Crumpleton and compete this project on a national basis so that we can have more than just the local uh, input into uh, the development. There are only 58 days left to work out the details of this development agreement <laughs> and the purchase agreement. There's not, there's not any of that information available to the public at this point. I would like a copy of the uh, purchase and sale agreement and the development agreement in whatever form it is. I still haven't gotten a complete copy of the LOI. Um, an example of information that's not available at this point is still the name of the corporation that they're going to, that uh, Triad Crunkleton is, is uh, forming. Mm -hmm. uh, the state of, uh, the Secretary of State doesn't have that information available. Um, where is the new county courthouse going to be? This may not be the responsibility of the city, but to sell this property to a private developer when the county courthouse needs a new location is a crime. This, this location should either be built as a, once it's torn down, as a new city hall or a new county courthouse and not a for-profit building for a local developer <clears throat> that hasn't even competed for that right. 
I'd also like to know where the uh, Goodwin Mills uh, Kaywood study is. Is you know that was given to them back in uh, March, if I'm not mistaken, March or April, and so that that should be done. So I'm not sure how you can agree to sell this property to a developer when you don't have the results of the of the uh, GMC study available to you. All of this stuff is coming up for December 31st. 58 days are left. There are a lot of things that nobody knows about. And, and, so, and I think, in my opinion, that the, the uh, public should have a right to see this information and they should have two or three weeks or a month to review it before it's accepted. You know, you can't just say, here it is, and, and vote on it that night. Um, I believe this new city hall is going to cost <clears throat> more than $50 million from the people that I've talked to. Mr. Devonish, your time is up. No extra minute. Would you like an extra minute? Not really. Sir? Thanks. Not really. Okay. Then no. <laughs> it's just a test. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Sure. Would anyone else like to address the council? Move to adjourn. We're adjourned.